sleep and jellyfish. <laughs> been back at work for almost a week. Uh, we've been very popular as anatomists um, this week because we're running an exam for the year two medics next week. So we've had lots of questions, we've been very busy. Anywho, uh, sleep. My eldest always bugs me about uh, why he has to sleep. He thinks uh, sleep is a waste of time. I'm not sure he's that, anyway. Um, <laughs> he, uh, and it's a good question, isn't it? Why on earth do we sleep? Uh, we have to sleep eight hours of out of 24-ish, you know, like a third of the day. And there are clear risks to sleep. Like, if you're asleep, you're at risk of, well, predation of being eaten. If you're asleep, you're not out there foraging for food, you're not taking care of your young. How can animals afford to spend so much time asleep? So there, there must be strong evolutionary drivers for this. There must be good reasons, or maybe sleeping during the night is just a good strategy because it means you're very still during the dark period. So you're less likely to get eaten, maybe. Maybe while you're asleep, well, because you're asleep, you're using less energy, so maybe you don't need as many calories overall to survive. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's a big open question and no doubt there's more than one right answer to this. There's an interesting paper published in Nature of Communications this week that has shed more light. There was already a bit of light. Added more evidence to explain some of this. I might have spoken to you about jellyfish and sea sponges and stuff because it's interesting with relation to our biology. I, I give a lecture to a medical neuroscience master's class about neuroembryology and evolution. That's one of the few times anybody lets me talk about evolution. Um, all of these things are tied together. The, the adult human, the embryology that created all this from something that was much simpler, the evolution that led to all these strange layouts that we have inside us. It's all linked and if you understand all of these, th these things it kind of makes more sense from maybe a bit of a nonsensical, nonsensical background. Anyway, uh, I talk about jellyfish because uh, sea sponges and jellyfish live in the world today and left the evolutionary tree that we're on. So they separated from us. Separate. We had a common ancestor about 550 million years ago in terms of, in terms of sea sponges, about 500 million years ago for jellyfish. Um, it, we can't look at the fossil record to see where the nervous system has evolved from because it evolved in soft, squishy animals that are not preserved by fossils. To be a fossil, you kind of need bones, right? Bones or cartilage, you need a skeleton. You can then look at the bones and infer what was inside those bones, look at stuff that's around today and say, ooh, nerves, brain, that sort of thing. Um, sea sponges use many of the same neurotransmitters that are in our body, which is incredible because we diverged more than half a billion years ago. Um, and these neurotransmitters are used then in these multicellular organisms to coordinate the actions of groups of cells. So neurotransmitters appeared first. Cells could affect the actions of other cells and coordinate those actions. Later, neurons appeared in some historical ancestor that we've never seen and probably never will see. But at some point, a cell that would depolarize its membrane to send action potentials across a distance inside a large, large, maybe large, multicellular organism. So that again, you could, one group of cells could affect, coordinate, control the actions of a group of cells at a distance. And we see neurons in jellyfish. Jellyfish don't have brains, but they have neurons. This study, published in Nature Communications, I think the last author is Rosenbaum. Anyway, the reason this is so much fun is jellyfish don't have brains, but they have neurons. Jellyfish sleep. So animals have to sleep for whatever reason. And um, these jellyfish sleep. Um, they sleep upside down. They determine sleep by looking at the activity of their tentacles, and their tentacles are less active when they are asleep 
and more active when they are awake. Uh, they sleep for eight hours a day. In fact, they sleep at night and uh, they have a nap in the middle of the day. They also looked at sea anemones, but we'll focus on jellyfish. And uh, this sleep cycle is linked to the day-night, the, la the light-dark cycle. And we know about jellyfish and that they can respond to light. Why do jellyfish need to sleep if they don't have a brain but they have neurons? Neurons must be the reason why we sleep then. Um, and when you look inside the neurons, and, and groups have looked at this before and seen that, DNA gets damaged. There is DNA damage that accumulates in neurons while someone is awake and those neurons are active. And then during sleep, um, there are DNA repair mechanisms that occur inside the cell that repair the DNA. In the jellyfish, um, this was also seen. So while they were awake, they could see DNA damage increasing inside the neurons. And then when the jellyfish slept, the, the amount of DNA damage went down as the DNA was repaired. Now, because the jellyfish respond to light, you can muck up their sleep. So if you muck around with the lights in the lab and you wake the jellyfish up when they're supposed to be asleep, the next day they try to catch up their sleep. Um, so they sleep more, they nap more to catch up with their sleep. If you shine UV light, which damages DNA, and damage the DNA of the jellyfish, they sleep more as a result. They spend the next, next couple of days catching up. And you, if you look at the DNA in the neurons, you see that the DNA is damaged and then the DNA is repaired with that extra sleep. Talking about neurotransmitters, um, I, you might have seen me talk about the pineal gland and melatonin and uh, circadian rhythms and how there's a reflex so that the, the the light and dark cycles of the day are our hypothalamus and pineal gland use melatonin to then regulate the circadian rhythms of the cells inside our body and that keeps our sleep wake cycle in sync with the light dark cycle and in many mammals you see the the changing length of the day having seasonal effects on reproduction that sort of thing for example Melatonin has a similar effect on the jellyfish. If you add melatonin, you, you, can, you can affect their sleep-wake cycle by changing, by adding melatonin to them, just like you can to us. Jellyfish, humans, 500 million years ago, melatonin. This, this sort of thing makes me very excited. I, it, it's, it's fascinating. You know how it's kind of difficult to imagine how um, sea animals sleep and migrating birds sleep and what seems to happen is that like half part of the brain will sleep but they can still fly they can still move through the water this is why you know otherwise dolphins if they went to sleep they just fall asleep sink to the bottom and drown right and migrating birds can travel huge distances and yet they need sleep does this help understand as in does this help you helps me imagine how they can sleep and keep moving because it's it's not a brain thing as such it's a it's a neuron thing when you're awake or when jellyfish are awake dna damage in neurons is faster than the repair mechanisms can keep up with sleep gives those cellular repair mechanisms an opportunity to catch up with that dna repair and neurons are so important um, that it's worth sleeping. It's worth the disadvantages of sleep for, for this to happen. This is not the only reason why sleep occurs. Um, it's, you know, there, there's lots of other work out there. I mean, sleep is really important for changing the level of connections between neurons. Sleep, okay, we're coming back to the exam thing. Sleep is really important in memory and learning, right? Circuits and connections. So you guys, if you've got exams next week, it's not just our medical students that got exams, but there are exams across the university happening this month and next month. Make sure you get plenty of sleep. Sleep is, it's not just about brains, it's about neurons, but it's also very much about memory and uh, learning. Don't cram, don't leave it to the last minute. Pace yourself. 
do exercise so you still sleep, manage your light so you can uh, sleep at the right time, wake at the right time, don't, don't do those all-nighters, they're not good for you, not good for your memory. Anyway, sleep. But it, isn't it great? 2026. And we're already uh, learning new and interesting things and adding on to things that we, we knew. Anyhow, um, I'll put a link to the paper if, below if you want to read, but it's another, uh, another bit of information to add to all the other bits of information. Lovely, all right. Um, 